Okay, so every month has a theme, as you know. I'm a theme and a unit person, so I love this. And a lot of the questions I get to ask is, if you don't have someone that's, say, between three and early five, then what do you do with them if they're above or below that age range? And I want to show you all the great things. The first thing I want to say is pretty much all of our craft projects we do together. So my two and a half year old through my six and a half year old all do our projects together. And let me give you an example of what that can look like. Um, the other month when we did our pond projects, this is a four year old's duck all on his own. This is a six and a half year old's duck on his own. And then this is a two and a half year old's duck with a little bit of help and a lot of tape. So as you can see, all of them were able to do it on their own and they made it their own. So that's one thing I do love about the crafts that come with them. They're open-ended. They're not all meant to look the same and be the same. So the littlest ones can glue and tape and maybe have some assistance. The preschoolers can make it fun in their own. And then the older kids tend to take things to a little bit more of a realistic effect and that's really cool to see. So the crafts are definitely always for all ages. Another example of that is our turtle pulley. And this is the one done by the six and a half year old. And then this is the one done by a four year old who took his eyes off. And the last one is getting pulled around the house and it is not colored. I just glued it together and he uses it as a toy. So as you can see, again, all ages were able to do the crafts. If there's a hands-on experiment that I can add, we all do that too. Another way to incorporate for the youngers and the olders is to use educational videos right alongside. So we will get on Brain Pop Junior, or we will get on to Amazon or Disney's nature videos and other themes, and we will look up videos that we can all watch and that maybe the older one can help to dive them a little bit deeper. So one last art project, right now we're doing bugs. This is the four-year-olds. And then this is the six and a half year olds. You can just see the spatial differences and the attention to detail. And so again, all ages can do it. I mean, I like doing these projects. A great thing that you can do with your themes for your older children is to extend them. Now, Experience um, Early Learning Curriculum does offer some workbooks to extend math and language arts for kindergarten slash first grade, depending on your child. I haven't used them. Um, I like to do my own thing, but I hear they're wonderful. If you don't wanna use them and want to do your own thing, I do have a couple ideas and resources for you. And in this blog post, I'll have a couple free links to some PDFs to use. So one way I like to extend it for my older kids is to have them read nonfiction and do little mini research reports once a month. So we're doing bugs this month. So we're doing a level one book on butterflies. This is a book that my rising first grader can read most of, and we'll read this together. And then we will work on a research report. So they will fill out what they know, what they want to know. Then they'll fill out information about the animal or insect. So what they can do, what they have, what they eat. And then we'll describe our animal in words. And then we'll answer some questions about our animal or insect. Does it hibernate or migrate? Does your animals have babies or lay eggs? Does your animal or insect in this case, slither, walk, run, swim, or fly? Do, does your animal eat plants, insects, or other animals? So that question will adjust for our insects. And then a couple other questions that I make them answer. What predators does your animal have? What, where does your animal live? And what fun fact did you learn about your animal? And then to wrap it up, I normally have them draw a picture of their animal in their habitat. I've taken it further where they've made a little stop motion video. You can use stop motion app to do that of little hand figures, um, like little butterflies, or we've done one on frogs, frogs hopping. And so they've done that as a wrap up. That's really fun. They can make the frogs hop in their habitats after we create them. Um, so we like to do a wrap up project basically during the month to extend for our older kids. Like I said, a writing and reading nonfiction report. Sometimes we'll make a little video with it. Sometimes we'll present it at dinner time or send a video to maybe a grandparent. Um, 
Sometimes we'll make a poster, or like I said, we've made stop motion videos using those little trinkets. And every month, um, I, one thing I do love about these kits is they have fun little manipulatives and examples to use, and you can use those in stop motion videos. And for a second, third, and on up, they love making those videos. It takes patience and it's fun, so they love doing that. So a, another option for your older kids is to read a fictional story. So for us, we have Ladybug's Birthday. This is a fun fiction read. My first grader can read some of the words, not all, so we do a shared reading with this. I actually read it aloud to everyone first, and then my first grader and I can go back and read it together. And then we do a fiction book report. So this is also gonna be on my blog. It's a free little PDF to help you extend this curriculum. You do your title of your book, your characters, your setting, the problem and the solution. You can write about it or you can draw and write about it depending on where your child is. Um, then you talk about your favorite part and you illustrate it. And then you draw a picture of your favorite character. So this is a great way to extend a fiction reading Paired. And Mother Goose Time does come with some fiction books. So we use those sometimes. And sometimes I find some others through Usborne, Scholastic, Amazon, the library, all those types of things. As, so the older ones, that's how we extend language arts. For the younger ones, we pretty much stick to what it has. They go over letters. They have some new words and vocabulary every week. So we put the vocabulary normally up on our board and we use our letters in sand trays. We use those trace, I make tracing page, pages for those letters. And we use every month, they have a little journal. The journals look different depending on the theme. And it will include a section for the color. So brown things, you can have them color things that are brown. You could go searching for things that are brown. You could cut things out of a magazine that are brown and glue them. For the older kids, you could have them find brown objects and then write what it is underneath to extend it. So you're working on fine motor skills by cutting and gluing. Then you can work on writing skills as well. They have a number every month. You're working on writing the number in both numerals and letters. And a, um, sorry, a shape for every month. So this month is the diamond. And I have a little bag that comes every month. And I will have my four-year-old help my two and a half year old go find objects around the house that look like a diamond. And then my first grader checks the objects. So they're all working together. And my first grader feels empowered and so does my four year old and my two and a half year old gets to be involved. Um, so these journals are great. You can use them with your preschooler to color, to trace, to hone in on the skills for the month. You can use them for your older children. If you, they can always use a little more practice. You can have them write their own things if you want. Or with your older children, I also like handwriting without tears. This is A, B looks very similar. What I like about it is there is a spot for illustration and then for writing. So you could just do a reflection journal once a week or so to get them writing as well if you want something a little bit uh, more advanced for them. So my littlest one, my two-year-old, let's talk about him with language arts. He's not doing a lot of it. Like I said, I'll have him maybe find letters that we're doing. We'll work on colors and shapes together. If there are activities like this month, we have tangrams and tangram puzzles. He can do that with us. I have, um, we talk about the shapes. I have the older ones also create their own tangrams without pictures. So that's something that they can do. I don't have them trace. I have them use grabbers like these to help with different manipulatives that come each month, which is fun. I have scoopers to also help each month. And what I also like to do is try to find a fun activity. And I'm trying to find the one that we were using earlier. And of course now I can't, oh, where'd it go? Well, I have a bumblebee activity and you'll see it on my Instagram, but what's great about it is I just find another activity that will work for them. Sometimes it's taking manipulatives, laying them out, and my two and a half year old will just take some sorting cups and we'll sort by color or we'll pour them back and forth. 
or I'll put rice in a bin. And now he's got a sensory bin with our theme. My older kids still love sensory bins too. They'll pretend they don't at first. And then once their brother gets them out, that's all everyone wants to do. It's a fun treat. So the younger ones can be involved in the art projects and the science, do things in a lighter way with them using fine motor skills, um, the read alouds, all those things. So one other thing I wanted to talk about is how to extend math a little bit here because for your kindergarten first and even if you have second graders at home, you might want to be able to take those math skills to the next level. And just going over numbers is great. It's still wonderful reinforcement and helps mastery, but you need to take it further than that. So normally there are some manipulatives that come each month. This was from my pond unit. And then I have black dots, which aren't next to me right now, but I um, that to use for counters. And then I have other counters. You can go to the Target dollar bin for erasers to add to your kits. But normally, if I have manipulatives like this, and if there is a game that is just counting, instead of counting, I'll have them add, or I'll have them count by two, or I'll have them spin twice, and they have to add it together, and that's how many spaces they get to move. So. I try to use some of the games so we can play them together, but extend them for my older kiddos. We had a grasshopper game this past uh, week or two weeks ago, and on the grasshopper cards were numbers, and you had to hop whatever number the card said, like a grasshopper. So my younger children, if it said two, five, 10, 12, they hop that many times. My older child had to add the numbers together and then hop that many times and I made them to him do mental math. So that's one way to extend it for him. Um, I also use frequently and you can see them behind me. See these whiteboards here? I love those whiteboards. We use them a lot during our time when we're doing this together so that my older one can write the math problems out if he needs to. We can work on our subtract subtraction. We can count by twos, fives, tens, so on, using our counters. He can write that out as I'm going over numbers with someone else. So there's great ways to involve everyone and extend it. Um, I would say that, of course, my three to five year old range gets every piece the most, but there's so many ways you can incorporate it. Even just the realistic pictures, all of my kids are into. And one little thing that I've been doing is I've been taking these great, plastic displays, which you can get at like the dollar store. And I've been displaying our pictures that way on tables. So that way they can see them as we're working on projects, as we're researching, whatever it is. So those are some ways you can extend it for your older kiddos and some ways that you can make it a little more simplified for your youngest. I highly encourage you to add some STEM and sensory bins. Maybe you're just using popsicle sticks and you're making a house for one of the animals um, that you're talking about. Or maybe you are reading a new story and then they are recreating the setting using paint. Um, we extended ours today. It was so fun. And we used fluorescent paint to add another bug. Uh, lightning fly, um, lightning bug, and that's our four-year-olds, and they glow. That's the two-year-olds. That's mine that got messed up. <laughs> this, oh, it's upside down, is the six-and-a-half-year-olds, and they made them kind of scraggly on purpose because then we used a black light to look at them. Check my Instagram and you'll see, but there's tons of ways to extend it, to incorporate it in your already existing curriculum if you have one for your older children, and to just make it fun. Um, the crafts and the STEM stations, STEAM is what they actually call them in um, experience learning stations, are all great for the age range that is probably about second, maybe third, depending on your child, and below, because they can make it their own and you can just guide them. So anyways, I hope this has been helpful. Check the blog for a couple links to my PDFs that I'm sharing and let me know how it goes. Talk soon.